Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome to a new video. My name is Prince Mason. Today, I'm pretty excited because I created my own frequency separation action that I'm going to be sharing to you guys for free. But also, I want to show you guys what I think is the best frequency separation technique that you guys can use for your retouching and the uh, technique that I use. Basically, I think it is the best because this is what I've been using and it's the best I've seen on the internet, like from other people using it. So, yeah, I think it's the least destructive frequency separation um, method out there. So yeah, like I said, you guys can download the action for free. I'll put a link up here, I think here, and I'll put a link in the description below so you guys can check it out. So let's get straight into this. Now I'm going to go to Photoshop and show you guys the image and show you guys how to use it. Um, I'm pretty sure we all know how to install actions here. If you do not, um, all you have to do is download that action and double click on it and it will install straight into your Photoshop. So let's get into Photoshop and I'll show you guys how you can use this action and the most interesting thing about this particular frequency separation action um, compared to the one I recommended before and the one I used to use before. So now in Photoshop, um, if you open Photoshop and you change your actions to button mode, which is right here, you'd see um, the advanced frequency separation because advanced FS underscore PM. So advanced frequency separation, um, Prince Mason, basic frequency separation, Prince Mason. So you guys can use any of those ones. So I'm just going to click the advanced and it would ask you to put the radius that you want for your Gaussian blow. Now, if you want to maintain a lot more texture, you use um, higher radiuses. So probably like a 20 and you would maintain a lot more texture than when you use like uh, 10 or a 9. But it depends on the image. If it's a close up image like the one that's on the screen right now, I'd advise you use um, something that's a bit high, maybe like 18 or 20 if you want to retain more texture, like I said. But if it's like a portrait and the person is like a bit further away from um, the camera and you know you really do not have too much details to work with, then you use um, smaller radiuses. So m maybe like an 8 or a 9. So for this image, I'm just going to stick to the 14 that's on the screen and click OK. So once you do that, and when I was telling you guys, the exciting thing or the most interesting thing about this particular action is if for some reason I want to create another one, let's say I'm done working with this, all I have to do is merge all my layers into one single layer. So command option shift and E, and it will create a new visible layer for me. And after I've done that, I just need to create either a basic or an advanced frequency separation um, action again. So I'm just going to click and it will run again, as you guys can see, then you see um, it would ask you to pick the radius you want. So I'm just going to click 14 again and click OK. And you guys can see it has created another frequency separation without actually affecting the one that was there before. So that's the amazing thing about this action, unlike the previous one I was using. So let me just go and show you guys if I create like uh, an advanced frequency separation, you know, let's just use a simple one. If I create like the simple frequency separation and I click OK and I merge all my layers together. So let's just merge everything together. Command, Option, Shift and E or Control, Alternate, Shift and E if you're using a PC and simple frequency separation. Click OK. Sometimes it's just going to, you guys can see um, on the screen right here, it's not doing anything to the new one I'm creating. Instead, it's going back to the old one to mess it up. So that's the... Thing I didn't like about the action before and that's why I created mine. So let's get into the easy and the best frequency separation technique that I recommend. So all you have to do is, ah, oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm just going to go use my own action I just created. I need to delete the old ones that I had there. So all I have to do is um, create like, a, let's say the advanced 14, right? And I have done tutorials on this in the past, so you guys can check that out. I think more in-depth tutorials, I'll put a link in the description so you guys can check it out. Now, it's the mixer brush technique, so I'll pick my mixer brush. Make sure that I uncheck this box right here. Um, eh, wet 30, low 30, mix can be 100, really doesn't matter. Then flow is 20. As you guys can see, my brush is always clean. And what it will do is that it's just going to um, work on the colors that are on my subject. So now I just have to come to my low frequency separation um, layer and I'll make sure it's the copy that I'm working with. And the reason why I'm working with the copy is so that if anything goes wrong, I can always delete and duplicate my low layer again instead of like having to redo frequency separation all over from the start. So now that I'm here, I just need to paint in between 
my shadows and my highlights. So the whole idea of retouching is blending skin tones so that the transition between the shadows and the highlights are seamless. So let's just work here. And right now, all I'm doing is just painting with my mixer brush tool. Make sure that you are copying all the settings that I have here. It's just going to be easier for you that way. And in less than how many seconds now? Let me show you guys what I have done. So what I use this technique really for is not um, high-end retouching right now because for me, that's like dodge and burn. But if I absolutely have to put out a project real fast and real quick, then I tend to use frequency separation or I do more frequency separation than dodge and burn. So I am rushing this. Let's see what we've done in probably one minute. So in one minute, this is what we have done. We have almost retouched this image. So I'm working on the low layer. If you know anything about frequency separation, you know that the skin tones are always in the low layer and the textures are in the high layer. So what would I do for the textures? All I have to do is pick my clone stamp tool, make sure my opacity is at 100 and my flow is at 100, then I will go up to my high frequency separation um, layer, my high copy layer, and all I have to do is hold alternate or option on Mac, sample and clean. As you guys can see, that's pretty easy and we have ourselves a retouched image by the time we're do done doing this. So let's see what our before and after is for the stop part. So that's our before and that's our after. So before, after, before, after. So by the time you've done this for the whole image, you probably have yourself a nice retouched image. Like your skin is going to look really nice. Let's see our low frequency separation again. Yeah, obviously I will take uh, my time, take a lot more time to you know do this. But the whole idea of this video is to give you guys a free action and also show you guys how this works. So yeah, so if you take your time with this, and like I said, I have videos where I've done um, more in-depth um, retouching with frequency separation. You guys should definitely check that out. So yeah, if you take your time with this and you just work with this over time, you would have like an amazing image over like next few minutes. Probably give yourself 20, 30 minutes to work on an image if you're just starting up. And um, that time is going to definitely become a lot lesser as you get really good at what you're doing. So after retouching your image, right, um, you want to color grade your image. So all you have to do is come to your color lookup table, load 3D lots and pick one of my signature lots that I just put out. Um, I think for this one, six works perfectly. Yes, I love how six looks and it just looks amazing on this image. So you guys should definitely check out my skin tone lots. It's like an easy way to color grade your images. Make sure your skin tones are looking really, really good. And there are a couple you can also try out. Let's see um, what five looks like. Five looks a little pale. All you have to do is reduce your opacity and you can get it to look really good. So yeah. Definitely check that out. And that's what this video is about. I hope my frequency separation actions really help you guys out. Um, a lot of people have been complaining that the previous links weren't working. So yeah, so this is it. Anyways, thank you for watching this video. Do not forget to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it because that will let YouTube know that the content I'm creating is amazing and YouTube will show it to other people. Also, subscribe to this channel, hit the bell icon, be one of the first people to know when I put up a new video. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing week. Peace.